Productive Pastor 110, how I use a color code for sermon preparation and preaching. What's going on, friends? It's Chad. Welcome back to Productive Pastor. Hope you're having a good week so far. I am, and this episode is about how I use color codes. Now, on Productive Pastor, we talk about healthy ministry through strategic productivity, and folks love a preaching preparation episode. But this might be, you know, one of the last ones for a long time, and this is why I'm in a little bit of a bittersweet moment today because this coming Sunday will be the last time I'm preaching every single week for, you know, I don't know how long I'm entering into a new season where I'm working full-time inside of my annual conference as a denominational uh, staff member, and I'll be preaching during that, but I won't be leading a congregation, and I won't be preaching every single week. And when I do preach, which will still be some, it won't be with people that I'm actually leading. And so I've been kind of thinking all week long, I've been honestly putting off my sermon preparation a little bit because it's just a weird space. I've done this every week now, I think, for... 12 years, and I preached a lot before that at the church I was serving where I was just a staff member um, and that sort of a thing. So it's going to be a different space, but I wanted to come in and to talk about one of the key things that's been part of my own sermon preparation for a long time, and it's using color codes both with prep and preaching. So this episode, we're going to talk about that, go into that today. As always, you can find the show notes at revchadbrooks.com slash ppp slash 110. I've got a couple of things I'm going to reference as part of this. also encourage you to go over to the show notes, sign up for the Productive Pastor emails, be part of that weekly uh, learning where it's a deep dive into a topic for a month, and I break it apart for across every single week of that month. So let's get into the content. I told you it's a, a bittersweet moment, but I've been doing this for a long time, and this has developed out over a long time. You know, I use uh, color codes for a lot of different parts of my own uh, ministry productivity. I use them when I'm reading. I talked about this in episode 94 on how to not waste your reading. I also use color notes in my own uh, color codes in my own scripture reading. I've got a whole YouTube video on my markup strategy. I'm going to put that in the show notes if you want to come watch that. You know, I do a lot of YouTube work, and I'm probably anticipating doing more YouTube work over the next couple of years. That's one way I'm going to kind of try to scratch the theological leadership itch that I have uh, over there. So, you know, go subscribe to the YouTube page. Hang out over there. Uh, we love to party in the comments. So let's talk about color codes. You know, I use color codes because I annotate things. That's really the way that I read, the way that I write, the way I work on everything. I'm an annotator, and it's not clean. It's nasty. It's messy. It's sloppy. But I annotate a lot. And what the color codes help me do is they help me keep things standard across the board I've got older Bibles and older books and older things I've done, and I just there's no method to the madness. It's just sheer madness completely. And a few years back, I started realizing I need to consolidate this, make this more efficient. Think about the ways that I use colors, whether it's with highlighters or with, with book flags, and a little bit more strategic of a method. So my preaching prep. Now, I was an analog-only sermon preparation person for a long time. I've been preaching from an iPad for over a decade, but about five years ago is where I brought my sermon preparation into the digital world using my iPad and the app GoodNotes. That way I can still get the best of both worlds. I can still handwrite. I can still annotate. I can still do crazy things. I can still do all that stuff, but it's in the digital world, and I've got much more access to those notes. When I moved a couple of years back, I had, I think, four boxes of notebooks I threw some away. I wish I wouldn't have now. I'm regretting it because I do go back to my older notes. Uh, but, hey, with good notes, I don't have to worry about that. Uh, but I still do that thing. I still follow more, much more of kind of an analog approach to things. I've tried using uh, the Logos Sermon Builder, those other digital solutions that don't work for me. I like the analog way. Now, the biggest part of this is something I talk about pretty much in every preaching episode is I'm a big fan of prepping to preach. This was the biggest change for me. When I first started writing sermons, it was literally get as much information as you can about the passage, regardless of what it is. Does it fit into the sermon? Does it help out anything? Just take notes on anything you find interesting and then try to consolidate it all together. And that just takes way too much time. 
And a few years ago, I realized I've got a few specific outlines that I almost always follow. And once I began to understand that and standardize that, I realized I could take my notes while I'm prepping for preaching in a more focused way. It still lets it kind of be all over the place at a somewhat better of a level, but those colors helped me keep things on track with the way that I work. The next big part of I talk about whenever I'm talking or teaching or helping folks understand preaching and sermon preparation is I always outline, always outlining. That's the big thing I mentioned first. I might make three or four or five outlines of a passage as I am prepping this out. And so always outlining had to be something that fit into the color code piece. So the colors I use when I am prepping to preach. Now, when I'm marking up the text early on, it's always the first thing I do is I just copy and paste the whole passage. And I'm typically typically a pericope preacher, meaning that I'm going to use a larger chunk of Scripture. I don't really do, like, let's pull into this one verse and preach on one verse for four weeks. I've got my friends that are hardcore expository sermon preaching, but I don't do it in that method. I like the bigger, longer piece. And I'll, I'll talk about why of that, you know, is part of this. Uh, But I always drop the whole passage into good notes, and I stick to the same color code I use when I read my Bible there. And I built out a color stack in GoodNote 6 that mirrors exactly the same, you know, analog colors I use when I'm doing any other Bible reading. And so that color code applies when I'm marking up that text. Sometimes I actually start in my paper Bible, and then I'll come over, I'll copy some stuff over, I'll filter out, but I'll always stick to that same color code whenever I'm exegeting a text. And then as I take my notes, and there's a few phases to my sermon preparation, there's always the things that I see when I'm just, you know, exegeting the text. A lot of times I make my first outline just based off of that um, and and work on that. But then my next kind of layers are is I do a lot of word study. Then sometimes I'll go into the theological dictionaries, you know, the IVP black dictionaries, and we'll, we'll need to research some broader ideas or that sort of a thing. Then after I do that, I normally make another outline. And then I go into commentaries or I go into other like Bible research, maybe some topic level research, that sort of thing. And I'm doing reading research. At that point in time is when I'm reading things. and I'm just taking notes off of what I'm reading and how what I'm reading is going to help and apply to the sermon I'm working on at the moment. This is where my color code begins to get to matter. It it matters also in the word study and in my previous research, but it really comes into when I'm just doing my baseline reading. These are the colors. It's it's actually pretty simple. Um, As I'm taking notes, sometimes I'm copy pasting stuff (coughs) from the handful of digital resources I do use, or I'm taking notes by hand and good notes on my reading. And these are the colors I use. I mark things with yellow when it's my thoughts. Regardless of where it goes, if I am reading something and I begin thinking myself, thinking for myself and you know thinking through things on my own rather than just taking notes on what somebody else says, I mark that with yellow. Now, if it's any other scripture reference, I mark it with green. And I do this a lot. I tend to follow more of a narrative theology or biblical theology approach. You know, think G.K. Beale that whole school of thought. So I love to build up layers upon layers of ideas across all of Scripture. And so green is there to help me understand and mark where these stacks might need to be built. When I mark something in orange, what this means is I'm marking it a you know, outline. Like this needs to be outlined, and this is where it would go inside of the outline. Blue or it's a question that I might have to ask and I might need to do a little bit more work. And then red is absolutely research this further. You know, those are kind of the big things. And then pink means include this. Like this has to be included no matter what. Sometimes, if not often, there's an orange box next to it of where this might need to be included. But pink is something like, okay, this absolutely matters so much. I need to do this. Let's make this happen. And so then as I go through my notes, I'm, I can filter out what I might feel really needs to be added to everything. A lot of times when I'm building that outline out, it's one of the reasons I love Good Note 6. I'll go over, if it's a yellow note, then I'll just lasso it, copy, and then paste it into the outline where that is going. 
Uh, but, a, but a lot of times when it begins to be building that final outline, I'll cruise through all of the pages that I have taken and I'm looking for those orange marks and making sure I include those orange marks. In a lot of ways, the pink means include, the orange means include, and this is where you include it at. So that helps me go through what sometimes might be 12 to 15 pages of notes and making sure that hits that final outline. Now, I developed this whole system in the analog when I was still using a paper notebook. And honestly, it was me getting this system refined that helped me build out my Bible markup color code. This is where I really kind of tested out what that might mean. So this is the colors I use as I'm prepping. Now, I also use colors when I build out my manuscript for when I am preaching because I do use a full manuscript. I value the folks that don't have to do that. If I was ever preaching in an absolute, you know, and even, even when I was preaching in this context in a very modern type worship service, I still used my iPad. I, I don't feel bad about that. I run through my sermon enough to where I'm not reading it but I like to have it, and, and especially because of one of these, you'll see why I like to stick to a manuscript. Uh, and so I do a full manuscript. So in my manuscript, green, it means scripture. That carries over from you know my, my prepping notes as well. Yellow means this is something I need to emphasize. Make sure this stands out. I might repeat this a couple of times. I might slow down my pace. I might do something else as I'm reading the room to realize this sentence or this block of sentences really, really matters. The next color I would use is blue. This is for when I had a new slide. Now, back when I was in a church plant scenario and I was doing a very, you know, I would call it a, a modern style. When I say modern style, think of someone like uh, John Mark Comer or John Tyson. Those are the preachers that I was paying a lot of attention to in that season. I use a lot of slides when I'm in that context. The blue meant, hey, there's a, there, this is a new slide. You need to move to a new slide. And I would print out my manuscript. That's why I actually like to, pre to preach from a manuscript, because I would print this out, and I would give it to the slide operator. You might be saying, Chad, how many slides are we talking about? I would probably go through 30, sometimes 40 slides in a message. So you can see where needing to know when to move into new slides might actually matter a lot. My sermon manuscripts back then for a 25-minute sermon could sometimes be five or six pages because I would have very detailed notes because in that scenario, and back then I was preaching and I was standing in front of a 25 foot wide screen. Uh, I took advantage of having that and that was part of the delivery. So that really built into my whole, why I had a manuscript and why I made plenty of space in the manuscript to make sure people understood what it meant to see that because those images were, you know, a part of the moment as well. And then purple means new heading. That's just a way for me to realize when I'm moving into the next section, because a lot of times where I will pay a lot of attention to would be those middle two or three sections where the actual teaching side of things was going on. I might be more extemporaneous in the beginning. I would definitely be more extemporaneous at the end but in that middle section, those primary teaching, those, the body of the sermon, I used purple to, to denotate it was a new section, but also because I had spent more time trying to memorize and work through that information to, be, to present it really well. So this is kind of a quicker episode, quicker idea, but I feel like you know, the color code is a thing that can be very helpful for people, especially if they're more visual. I, I talk all the time about how productivity are either engineers or artists. And I'm much more of the artist side of things. You know, to me, I've got coffee table books on other people's notebooks. There is a beauty. There is an aesthetic to the note process for me. And I realized that, you know, using a color code would help just formalize that better and help it to where others can take pay attention to it, where I can pay attention to it better. And it just you know, simply becomes a little bit more efficient and more effective. So do you use color codes? I would love to hear about the color codes. I'm hanging out in the Productive Pastor community. It's over a thousand ministry leaders that are there together to help each other with healthy ministry through strategic productivity. But also, uh, or we can talk about this sort of thing. You know, you can pop into the uh, the thread for the episode that's there. As always, I'm Chad Brooks. It's great to have you. I will be back on the next episode, and I will see you then.